Hello everyone, in this script demo, I'll show you a script that monitors the key inputs and the windows that a user activates. If you're interested in this script, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. Just before we begin, it is not advisable that you log the key inputs of a computer user, say if you're an employer and you want to monitor what your employee does on a PC or what windows the employee stays on, you might get in trouble in relation to privacy concerns. But I'm not a lawyer, of course, so I can't give you legal advice. All right, with that aside, let's begin exploring how the key logging works. So the command that we're gonna use is the input command and I'm not necessarily going to go into all the details of the input command. If you want to learn more about it, you can just go to that official documentation. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop first because I'm going to use this loop to continually monitor the input of the keyboard strokes. So the input command comes right in and then the first parameter is the output variable. And then I'm gonna apply two options. The first option is V, it means to allow the user to push through the input. So when you type something out, it does get typed out on your screen. And a T of five, it means you want this interval during which you want to collect the key inputs to be five seconds. So for five seconds, when this command runs, it will sort of pause and watch what you do, right? And then it will gather all the keystrokes that you have input within that five second window and puts that into, into the key variable. And then what I'm going to do is file append the key and key log. Right? If this is a log file, but it's going to be a text file. So let me bring up the folder where this script is saved. So this is test script one. Now the key log file is going to be saved in the same directory. So if I, I'm just going to create a emergency exit by pressing the exit key to exit the script. I'm also going to add single instance force. Now, if I save this script and run it, what's gonna happen is it's going to create the key log file and append all the keys that I have input within each five second period within each loop. So now you can see that the key log file has been created. There's nothing in here because I haven't typed anything out. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the enter key twice and then go hello world with an exclamation mark and wait for a little while. Now you can see that the size of the key log has changed to one kilobyte. If I open it up, you can see that the two enter keys have been entered and then the hello world text has been saved into my key log file. Now it's continuously updating, but because I'm not typing anything out, there's nothing being added to it. All right, let me just go ahead and type out maybe goodbye. And then wait for a bit and then open this up again. And there you go. So the keys that I have typed out, which is supposed to be good, goodbye, but it missed, it missed the B. And that is because probably because this script has a default delay of about 10 milliseconds within each line of command, which you can lower it. So let me just get out of this, the script first by pressing the exit key, which you can remove by setting the batch lines to negative one. Now, if you run this, so if you type out really fast, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a delay between these two lines. So once this line finishes, there's gonna be a, a, about 10 millisecond delay until the next one runs. And then perhaps the next, when the next loop happens, there's gonna be another 10 milliseconds. I'm not sure, but there's definitely going to be some sort of a delay before this, the next round of input command kicks in and whatever that you type out within that split second is not going to be captured. So if you set the batch line to negative one, then it should, it should um, capture almost all of it. It should capture much more than if you had not put that in. Now, if I run this and type something out, um, I'm just gonna type out really quickly. So let's cut some random text and then wait for a while that's just been created but there was a there is a potential that not all the keys might have been logged in the first round and in, in the second round it should have been all logged so if i open this up now I'll just make this always on top 
I can copy this and compare whether you know the length of the string is the same and it is the same it looks to be the same to verify whether all keys must have been typed uh, must have been saved or not so in this manner you can uh, log keys so this is the basic idea of how you can log keys although um, one thing to note is that if you uh, for example let me get out of the script for example if you type something out and then press the backspace keys to delete what you have typed out by default, the log is not also not going to um, log the characters that you have deleted by pressing the backspace key. So, for example, if I run the script again and said hello world, and so and press the backspace key to remove the world and then replaced it with by, what's going to happen is within the key log file, it's not going to uh, save the world part because you have pressed the backspace keys to delete it now if you want if you want the entire thing including the world to be printed you can use the let me get out of the script you can use the b option to ignore the backspace which means if you typed out hello world and then did backspace five times to delete it and typed out by what's going to happen is it's going to ignore all the backspaces so it's going to go hello world and by immediately and save it into the key log and also with this option right now you won't be able to log the control plus key combo so if you did control c or control v that's not going to be logged so if you want to log that you can input the M option as well and what's that what that is going to do is if I run this script again and maybe copy this press a few enters paste enter paste enter paste control key combination is going to be saved as an S key character I believe it's going to be saved in a, a gibberish like this these are the control V's but they all share the same pattern so um, you're just going to map out the control key combos to the ASCII characters. Now let me just quickly show you um, a script that is written by this man called Cruncher1. Now this short script, what this short script does is it will, while it captures the key inputs, it will also save the active window of the user where the user has typed out those key inputs so uh, let me let me put an escape key and then delete this key log file and run the script and the log file should be created within five seconds let me there we go it's been created right down there and let me go enter keys and type something out in within sight now that should say the title of my active window which is going to be test script one dot auto hockey site for hockey and this text should be saved in the log as well so let me just go ahead and open it up and so the first log log nothing because i didn't type anything out within the first five seconds and then the next five seconds it has it, it has logged what I have typed out and then if I open it again right now because I think okay because I have changed my um, active window to key log notepad it has registered that although because I didn't type anything out there was nothing else to input I think once I okay so I was in the notepad for a while definitely over five seconds but it didn't log anything and it didn't create an entry that starts with the lots of asterisks and that's because the way the code works is that if your current active title is the same as the old active title uh, five seconds ago then you're not going to start a new entry that starts with all these star signs you're just going to add the keys that were added within the new five second period so what that means is i was in the key log file for a while but nothing else has been added but if i went to another window say back to my site waited for a while and then went back to my key log file 
that should have been registered so there we go so we've got a new timestamp temporary script I think that must be the name of the folder that we are in but you've got the test script one dot auto haki in there now uh, notepad yeah okay so if I type something out within say so I've, I have another notepad here type Bring something out and then also make this always on top type some more things out in sight so all of those should be logged in my key log by now so if I open up the key log again I should see somewhere da down here an untitled notepad I had that activated so it registered that but I didn't type that out. I didn't type anything. It didn't capture anything because I didn't type anything out within a five second starting from this timestamp. And then five seconds later, it has, oh no. So within the five seconds, starting from 32 seconds, it has, I haven't input anything, so it didn't capture anything. But in the next five seconds, I have typed something out, which is right here. And then in the next five seconds, I went to side and typed more stuff out. So that's how it works. Now, let me just close out of all of this and exit out of the script and walk you through the script line by line. So when you run the script, you have a continuous loop running without any sleep. And the first thing it's going to do is put all the key inputs that it collects within a five second window into the k variable. And then it's going to store into a variable called t, the current timestamp in this format. And then it's going to get the active window title, which is the test script one dot ahk blah, 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 into a variable called pt. And then what it's going to do is it's going to do a a legacy assignment that puts all these values inside the variable called pttk and it's going to add all, add all these new lines and then all these star signs new line and then these variables that we have gathered from above pt uh, which represent the, the the active title timestamp and the keys and then it's going to run a ternary operator and therefore it looks at the if statement of pt whether check it checks whether the pt which is the active title that we have gathered up here is not equal to pt2 and the first time we run this uh, loop the, in the first iteration we won't have anything in pt2 the pt2 comes in here and the p the value that pt2 receives in the last line is the value that is stored in pt now so this is this is not going to be so pt doesn't equal pt2 so this is going to be satisfied which means pttk is going to be stored into k right and if that is not the case then k is going to be k which means nothing and so what this file append command is going to do is use that value that is stored in k and save that value into the key log file and then finally, it's going to store the active window title into PT2. And then in the next iteration of the loop, it's going to go back and do all the same thing. And when it hits this point, it's going to check whether the current window PT1, which you get with the winget active title command, whether the title of the current window is not equal to PT2 which is the window that you have saved from the past iteration of the loop. Now, if it is not the same, then you input the value stored in pttk variable, which, which means all these new lines and asterisks and, you know, all this uh, timestamp and blah, 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 into the variable key, which goes into file append command to be appended to the key log. Otherwise, which means this equaled this the k is going to be assigned to k and therefore nothing it's going to be the same uh, basically it did nothing and what was in k here is the input that you have 
create it within a, within the five second period, and then um, and then when k becomes k, that get, becomes inserted into the key log, and so that that's how it works, and that's how this line understands whether you have changed the active window or not, and action take different actions based on that. So now, if you want to instead continuously monitor the active window every uh, five seconds okay, every five seconds you can comment this out and convert this into pttk and therefore every time this entire string of value will be stored into the key log and I'm going to demonstrate this to you except that I'm going to change the timestamp to two seconds because five seconds is too long of a long of a time. And so I'm going to save this. Oh, actually, I should have I should have deleted this key log. And then run it again. I'm going to see that key log file being created. And then every two seconds, it's going to add the the PTTK variable inside the key log. So I'm going to wait here for a while, and then maybe I can bring up. Um, the Chrome window back, for example, I stay here for a while, and then switch to my folder, and then wait for it here for a while, and then perhaps open up another notepad, and then go back to site. Okay, I'm going to hit exit to stop logging. And if I open up the log file, I'll be able to see at a two every two second interval, the active window that I was in. I mean, I didn't type anything out, but if I type something out, then it would be down here. Um, site, 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 site. And then I moved my focus to the Google Chrome page. And it noticed that. And then Google Chrome, and then te uh, temporary script, which is the, the name of the folder. And then I did this notepad came up because I pressed the start button to type out notepad in order to launch a new notepad. That's why it managed to capture this text. Um, and then notepad, notepad, and then site. So this is how you can continuously monitor the active window of a user. And finally, if you want to hide, for example, this script from the tray icon. So when you run auto hockey scripts, the tray icon will show the tray icon of the auto key script, right? So if I went ahead and run this, I'm going to see the tray icon here, which gets saved into me this minimize uh, window. Um, if you want to hide that, what you can do is add in no tray icon command at top. And right now I've I have exited out, so I've got no auto key icon in the tray. But when I run it, let me just delete that to show that I have run it. Actually, let me run it. And if I go back to my tray, you can't see that in the tray icon. So that's um, that's a way to hide tray icon. So the target that you monitor doesn't know that they are being monitored. All right, this is it for today's uh, script demo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.